Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, depending on where you happen to be located. Um, thank you for joining our uh, webinar on uh, sensor usage in the agricultural uh, industry. Uh, my name is Chris Delling, and I will be presenting the uh, content today. Um, I am the uh, field sales manager for high tech sensors in the uh, central portion of the United States. And um, we'll be talking about some, <clears throat> some applications that uh, are currently being used in, in the agricultural industry um, where, where high-tech sensors can be employed uh, for uh, specific uh, requirements. Um, so what, what will we be covering today? But basically, we're going to be talking about uh, giving you a quick overview of what, what we're referring to when we talk about a force sensor, a strain gauge sensor, a load cell. These are all more or less interchangeable terms. Um, where these products are being used in a general context. And then we'll focus on some specific applications uh, within the agricultural equipment industry. Um, where these sensors are, are used wide, in a widespread case. Um, we'll, we'll talk about our specific solutions and, and, and what high tech can bring to the table. And we'll conclude with a question and answer period um, at the end of the session. Uh, feel free uh, to enter any questions you might have uh, using the chat box uh, on the GoToMeeting screen. Uh, if by some chance we can't get to your question um, during the seminar, we will follow back up with you uh, after the fact. So what are strain gauge sensors? Basically, strain gauge sensors, as I said, they go by many names, load cell, force sensor, um, what have you. They are a mechanical element, a mechanical spring, if you will, uh, to which uh, strain gauges are bonded. Uh, these elements are are designed to deform in a uh, in a uniform linear meth manner uh, under applied loads. Um, these loads can be anything, uh, basically any type of mechanical force. Could be uh, could be a, 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 an axial force, a torque, a pressure, um, really any type of mechanical energy that you want to measure the force of. Uh, this can be accomplished using a strain gauge sensor. Uh, the sensors you see on the screen here uh, in this slide uh, are representational of some standard products that we manufacture and um, are base, the basis, uh, or some, in some cases, are the basis for some of the applications that we'll be looking at further into the, uh, into the presentation. Um, not going to try to teach a class on strain gauges, but basically a strain gauge is a variable resistor that changes uh, its resistance based on uh, a, a change in length. So uh, essentially we, we bond these strain gauges onto the, the mechanical element as the element is deformed under load, uh, the gauge Likewise, is deformed a, a proportional amount, and we are able to take that electrical output and calibrate it as a um, as a as an engineering in, in engineering units. So we can basically measure uh, a force with a direct output in uh, engineering units that are useful to to uh, to the end user. Um, again, these gauges are typically bonded using, uh, using an epoxy-based uh, adhesive, uh, but in some cases they can also be installed uh, via weld. Our sensors are used in a diverse set of industries. Um, these are representational of some of the products that are some of the market segments that we're very active in. Uh, aerospace and defense, biomedical, uh, industrial, energy, agriculture, and automotive. 
Um, basically, what, what high tech does is designs and develops custom string gauge solutions for specific industries and specific applications. Um, we'll talk now about some basic sensors that are some, I guess I'll say not basic, some, some sensors that are actively used in agriculture right now, but I don't want to limit that discussion to focusing solely on this, these applications because high tech, what high tech does is since 1971, uh, we've been designing and building uh, custom sensors for specific applications. Our expertise is in the area of sensor design and development. Uh, we are not, by nature, an a expert in farming or in agriculture. So, um, you know, the application end of this uh, is probably better uh, understood by the audience in many cases than it would be by us. Um, but you know, from a design of a sensor standpoint, a technical design of the sensor standpoint, this is where uh, high tech is is uh, bringing our value to the table. So, as I mentioned, the down the, the first sensor I'll talk about here is our downforce sensor. Um, a downforce sensor is very simply a sensor that measures the amount of force needed to prepare the soil for insertion of a seed. Um, down, modern, modern agricultural equipment um, relies, they, they basically rely on use of automated planters and seeders, which are towed implements that get uh, pulled behind a tractor. And these machines will plant multiple rows of crops in a single pass. Um, there are planters that are operating with, you know, 64 rows of seed being, in, being inserted in the ground simultaneously. Um, the insertion of the seed is dependent on the soil conditions, basically looking at soil compaction, moisture content, and, and other conditions that uh, need to be adjusted for based on the type of seed being planted uh, to get the maximum yield from your crops. Um, our, our downforce sensors are basically installed in the row unit. Uh, they can be installed on uh, multiple row units within a planter, um, depending on how much variation the, uh, the farmer feels there is in the field. Um, more and more of this industry is, is migrating towards more sensors, more instrumented row units being installed. Um, but again, depending on the application, we might have every other row unit, every fourth row unit. In some cases, every row unit might have a downforce sensor installed on it. When you're talking about downforce sensing, um, there are some challenges that we have to deal with uh, in, in designing and building a sensor that will survive in the application. Um, mechanical packaging is always a, is a constant for us because we are not, we are not trying to sell a off the shelf product that, you know, you will adapt to rather we're designing a sensor that would, you know, fit into a specific, a specific location on, on the actual machine. Um, you very often standard products are not going to fit in the area where they need to be measuring the force. So being able to design and build a custom sensor is, is definitely a, a positive. Um, another thing that occurs in the downforce sensing application is the potential for non-axial loads uh, to be uh, witnessed by the load cell, uh, basically uh, due to mechanical tolerances, uh, stack up and, 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 and interference fits with various components. Um, there are certainly the possibility of introducing um, 
extraneous loads to the sensor, which can cause mechanical wear and or destroy the, the sensor or its mating components. So you basically need to adjust for that and accommodate that in your design. Finally, environmentally speaking, these are out in the field. They're seeing rain, mud, dust, what have you. Um, the sensor has to be designed and built in a way to survive those environmental conditions, and it cannot have, it cannot be adversely affected by uh, electrical, electromechanical interference. So these are all things that get factored into the design process when we're designing the downforce sensor. Um, this is a typical sensor. This is a stock photo, obviously. It's not, not an actual uh, sensor, but representational of a, of a sensor that we currently supply uh, in the industry. Uh, basically, um, the sensor that we provide is uh, has integrated electronics built into it um, that communicates directly with the vehicle ECU. Um, and they can control and adjust the planting on the fly. Um, this is one possible solution to downforce sensing. Uh, it is by no means the only way to accomplish this. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, what we want to do is we want to actually work with you to design and build a sensor that specifically fits in your machine. Our sensors uh, offer high accuracy, high quality, uh, and are designed for harsh environmental conditions. And again, I want to emphasize the, the whole point here is that we want to collaborate with your people, with your designers to come up with a solution that is best suited for your application. Um, and as I mentioned, we can provide, uh, we have the ability to design and in incorporate high level electronics into our sensor design. So uh, if you need a high level voltage output, if you need a digital bus output, CAN bus output, uh, Profi bus, anything that you would potentially want to incorporate uh, in terms of uh, electrical output, we can accommodate that working with our team to, des to design and incorporate those electronics within the sensor. A second application that is widely known throughout the industry is draft control on a tractor. Um, a draft load is simply the force that the tractor is seeing as a result of pulling a implement behind it. Um, this is oftentimes uh, an issue in uh, with tilling uh, applications. Um, and, and basically, anytime you think of a plow or anything that's digging soil or, or uh, somehow being dragged through the soil, those draft loads uh, can increase. Um, the tractor, what you're seeing in the image on the screen is what is typically known as a three-point hitch. Um, you have two lower, uh, uh, two lower draw arms and an upper control arm. Um, and then in the center here is a power takeoff unit, which is used to power the towed implement. Um, basically, what, what we would employ here is a load pin. Uh, it might be a single axis or it could be a dual axis load pin, depending on the application, um, which replaces an existing clevis pin on the hitch. This allows us to measure the direct, directly measure the applied loads that are being transferred through the hitch. It doesn't alter the geometry of the hitch. It doesn't alter anything to do with the tractor. It's simply a load pin that is um, taking the place of an existing uh, dumb pin, I'll say. It's a smart pin that's replacing a, a, a dumb pin. Um, and the, the signal from the pin can be used by the, 
vehicle ECU to control things. So for an example, if you are plowing soil and they encounter, it encounters a, um, a change in the soil or an obstruction in the soil, something along these lines, uh, instead of directly overloading the tractor, potentially causing damage to the tractor or the implement, uh, the draft pin will communicate to the ECU, allow the ECU to potentially raise the toad implement up so that it clears the obstacle beneath. Uh, if you've got very hard soil, um, the draft load is going to be much higher than it would be on uh, soft, loamy soil. So uh, as, the, as the tractor moves um, into different locations on the farm, uh, the soil conditions can change. Likewise, it may be necessary to reduce uh, the depth of, of, the, uh, uh, of the toad implement so that the draft load is better managed. Now, draft control, like everything else, draft control can be a can, can have, it has its own set of challenges, and it can also be accomplished using different methods. Um, Hydraulic sensors, for example, are internal measurements of force. They rely on measuring the hydraulic pressure in a system. Um, these things, these set types of sensors can be uh, influenced and, and errors can be found due to uh, seal stiction, due to hydraulic fluid leakage, uh, due to loss of hydraulic fluid in the system. All these things factor into um, in, into a, into potentially causing an erroneous reading, or or for that matter, perhaps a complete failure of the draft control system. Um, sensors that are not properly environmentally sealed um, can fail due to water intrusion, um, which is common, you know, potentially in. In, an, in a situation where they're doing a wash down of the tractor uh, after, after being used in the field uh, or potentially due to partial submersion of the tractor in the field uh, that results in leakage and, and failure of the part. Um, and then the other issue that factors in here is that a single axis load pin can experience an error if the loads are not well aligned with the primary sensing axis of the part. This is just a quick uh, view of what, what simplified view, I guess, of what I showed in the previous photo. Uh, basically, the load pin would be installed on the lower link, and then the control link or the top link would, would actually function as the method to raise and lower the implement uh, behind the tractor. Um, this is a, again, a stock photo of a off the shelf uh, load pin, but representational of what the draft pin would, would potentially look like. Um, and when we're talking about um, we're talking about the application at hand here. Um, again, there are some solutions that that high tech brings to the table. Um, the, the strain gauge load pin, as I mentioned, provides a direct measurement of the applied load. It's free from errors due to secondary measurement systems like hydraulics. Our load pins are built out of corrosion res resistant alloys, stainless steel, um, and uh, can be again equipped with internal electronics that are all hermetically sealed within a laser welded cavity. So uh, basically fully submersible um, and, and designed for the application in which they're being used. Um, this is not necessarily true of off the shelf load pins. Um, and then high tech also can provide a dual axis load pin. Uh, this is helpful where the applied loads are um, are not aligned, well aligned with the uh, with the designed 
load of a single axis pin. If there's a variation in the angle of the load being applied, this uh, by using a dual axis load pin, we can act we can accurately resolve the uh, the loads regardless of how it's aligned um, with regards to the the pin's uh, axis. The uh, uh, another application that we'd like to highlight is uh, the use of load sensors for onboard weighing. Um, within the agricultural industry, everything, virtually everything, is measured uh, in terms of weight sold, crops are sold in terms of weight, whether it's in tons or pounds or whatever the case might be, um, virtually any type of harvested seed, grain is going to be weighed. Uh, likewise, um, there are other uh, vehicles and other implements that are used in on the farm, um, whether they be for measuring or for storing and transporting seed to the field uh, for planting. Uh, could be for feeding livestock, uh, could be used for spreading fertilizer, um, as well as putting sensors into the harvester grain tank. So uh, essentially, there are a variety of applications where, um, where these sensors can be used. Um, again, there's a, a great deal of of variability on where the sensor gets installed based on the uh, the specific uh, application, the specific mechanical constraints that we have to deal with. Um, but in any case, high tech will uh, manufacture a strain gauge sensor for or sensors rather for uh, measuring the contents of a tank. Um, the installation might be a load cell mounted between the tank and frame of, of the vehicle, uh, or alternately, it could be uh, take the form of a uh, cantilevered pin um, that would serve as the axle for a cart. Um, so essentially, think of an instrumented axle spindle um, that is instrumented to measure how much load is applied in the uh, in the in the uh, tank or 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 storage uh, bin. When we deal with um, when we deal with onboard weighing, you have a, a number of things that you have to be aware of. Um, Probably most most uh, notably is the potential for overloading of of the sensor. Basically, the sensor is going to be supporting the weight of the tank, the weight of uh, everything in the tank, and any ancillary uh, fixtures attached to the tank that might might be involved here. Um, that is. Well, well and good, and that's what we want to do. But the reality is uh, there are other forces that can cause uh, errors and or damage to the load cell if the load cell is not de designed properly. Um, these can, you know, these can include impact loads when you're filling the tank. Uh, you have a large mass of material being dumped into a tank. Uh, you can see impact loads associated with that. Um, you can you can get impact loading from the vehicle operating and moving over uh, uneven terrain, basically moving across hedgerows and, and things like this. Um, these forces can can are, are significantly higher uh, in many cases than what um, than what the uh, sensor was intended to measure. Uh, and it, it can cause damage and or premature fatigue failure, uh, as well as uh, getting uh, 
spurious readings due to vibrational constant, vibrational inputs and so forth. Um, finally, we have concerns about thermal drift. Um, when you think about the typical uh, application in the field, you have a tractor and an implement that's going out into the field, perhaps, you know, before dawn in the morning and might be out harvesting grain until the evening. And during the course of the day, uh, not unusual for a tractor to see 30, 40 degrees temperature swing, if not more. And uh, in addition to the, the, the uh, daily swings in temperature, you get solar localized solar heating of the sensor um, due to sun exposure. And uh, all these factors um, can result in drifts and errors in your measurement. So it's, 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 it's very important that the sensors be properly compensated to account for uh, output changes due to thermal drift. So, you know, again, I mentioned there's many different ways to, to approach this, but uh, one such application uh, is to use a, uh, a, a variation of a standard product, uh, a low profile load cell that m is mounted uh, between the grain tank and in this case, a spreader tank, should, should say a spreader tank and the spreader itself. Um, and basically, um, these would typically be used perhaps four, four load cells, one under each corner of the sensor, uh, one, one under each corner of the tank, rather, excuse me, and the outputs are going to be averaged and summed to give you a, an output um, that is uh, accurate irrespective of how the uh, loads are distributed in the, in the tank. So our, uh, you know, when we're dealing with onboard weighing, um, high tech has the capability to incorporate auxiliary sensors. Um, you put an inclinometer into a load cell so that we can detect and compensate for uh, gravitational errors due to the, the vehicle operating under on, in uneven terrain. Um, the uh, load cells are, are designed with, uh, with extreme temperatures in mind using thermal, uh, thermal compensation. Uh, to correct for and accommodate the thermal drift that is common uh, in, in these types of applications. And our sensors also are designed with very high safety standards, up to 600% overload rating, um, which helps to ensure a long operational life and uh, uh, basically ensures that the, the load cell is not going to suffer from premature failure due to fatigue uh, or overloading. So when we get down to it, you know, the question becomes why, why would someone choose high-tech sensors? Um, basically high-tech, as I mentioned, um, is a pioneer in uh, the design and manufacture of custom sensor uh, app applications, custom design sensors for a wide range of applications. Um, we've been doing this since 1971. So we have a great depth of operational and, and application based experience to draw from. Um, we are one of the largest suppliers and uh, users of strain gauges globally. Um, we, we routinely uh, exceed a million strain gauges uh, installed each year. Um, so we, we certainly have uh, the experience to draw from and the, the expertise that is required. Um, we, we offer uh, uh, ISO uh, certification, uh, both, both ISO 9001 and, and ISO 17025 from a calibration standpoint. Um, we, we, um, 
have a, a field sales reps as well as our own engineers uh, available to assist the customers um, as as applications develop. And and lastly, I'll say that uh, you know, as as part of the Humanetics group or Humanetics family of companies, um, we have uh, strong financial backing uh, behind us. And we also have um, some partner companies that we can draw expertise from for specific requirements. Uh, if, you know, for example, uh, if we're dealing with very high volumes, we can work with one of our sister companies in, to develop the automation needed to, to uh, um, produce large volumes of, of, of a given part at a very economical rate. I think that probably ends the formal presentation. I don't know if there's any questions. I haven't really been monitoring the questions. Okay. So, um, and one question, can load pins be applied to other applications? Uh, example, a truck towing a trailer. Um, yes, absolutely. Um, load pins are not in any way constrained to a specific application. They can be used, they are used commonly in cranes. They're used commonly in any, really any machine or, or assembly where a clevis pin is currently situated, um, we can fit a load pin. And uh, basically the load pin um, will allow for a very clean installation with no, um, uh, you know, no mechanical adjustment required a traditional load cell uh, is going to be an inline device. You're going to have to make room for it in the application. Um, by using a load pin, um, you know, you can, you can basically replace an existing element within the mechanical, uh, within the mechanical assembly and be able to measure forces directly. Um, load pins get used on construction equipment. They get used in agricultural equipment. They get used as for flight controls on aircraft, um, and, and they get used in, you know, just a, a huge diverse range of applications. Um, I had a question regarding the ability to package electronics inside of the load button. Uh, yes, that is something that we do offer. Um, basically we have, um, a complete team of electrical design and manufacturing folks on staff that can design custom electronics to house within um, within the load pin. Um, looking here. Okay, there's a question about um, whether our whether we have the technology to read the measurements from the sensor. Um, and I will say the answer there is it depends. Um, we have signal conditioning equipment that we offer um, that can be used to measure uh, to, to read the output of a of a load cell or a load sensor. Um, these are not products that are typically, would not, would not be typically used in the field on a tractor, for, for example. Um, that's typically more often than that, run, running either a, a high level voltage or a CAN bus signal to the ECU um, to, to measure and or to, to basically read and interpret those signals. But yes, we, we, we do have the capability to do that, um, you know, on a, on a limited basis. It's not, it's not an area that we are specialized in, but we do have products that 
will support that. I think, um, I mean, I, I could, uh, in terms of, in terms of uh, the type of electronics, um, again, we can, we can provide an analog signal, um, zero to five, zero to 10. Um, there's some, some fairly um, esoteric uh, voltage outputs that the agricultural industry uses specifically, you know, 2.6 to 4.7 volts. I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm just, they're, they're not what you would typically associate, but we can provide any output that is required. We can do four to 20 milliamp um, constant current applications. We can do CAN bus. Um, we can do Profibus, uh, Modbus. I mean, literally, um, we're, we're wide open in terms of what we can do in terms of integrated electronics. It's not something that we can, that we would typically do on a one or two piece requirement. But if we're talking about a, an application with higher volumes where it makes sense to design and integrate the electronics, that is certainly within our, within our capabilities. So, um, any other, anything else that uh, we could discuss today? I think if not, we can probably go ahead and, and end this uh, session um, and we will follow up with, with everybody after the meeting, after the seminar, make sure uh, that you got the information that you needed. And uh, if we can be of any more service to you, um, we'd be anxious to work with you. All right. Well, once again, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, we do appreciate it. And um, hopefully you got some benefit from joining us. And uh, we, again, look forward to working with you in the future. We will keep this uh, session op open for a little bit. Uh, if anyone has any additional questions they'd like to add, uh, you can certainly do so. Uh, and then for the next few minutes, and um, we will get back to you with, with an answer promptly. All right. Thanks very much.